All right. So we've heard about the future. We know what that's going to look like now. I'm going to talk about the present. Uh, mobile is today changing everything. Many of you have seen this in your businesses. Uh, but first, let me start with the past. So I used to work as a venture investor probably about 10 years ago. Um, and we used to look at all, all these early stage consumer internet businesses, tons in mobile, and nothing, nothing, nothing was really that exciting then. It was sort of the area that was sort of promising everything and never quite hit. And I remember talking to a friend of mine who ran a mobile business back in 2007. And I asked him, you know, when is it going to happen? And he said, well, you know, take your, your worst case expectation, double it, add a few years, and it'll happen then. So, so then, you know, in 2010, I founded List, an uh, e-commerce platform. And again, nothing in mobile. And, and out of nowhere, we began to see mobile traffic, you know, ramping and ramping. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, what we saw at List and, uh, and what we're seeing in the wider space. So as David mentioned, we're, we're a fashion e-commerce platform. We partner with brands and uh, department stores and boutiques and personalized shopping experiences for millions of people around the world. And this year so far, of the 129 years of total time spent on the platform shopping, uh, over a third has come from, from mobile. And again, that's from basically a standing start only like two to two years ago. So the next few slides are going to be um, graphs, so a little bit dry, but showing the rate of change in this area. And I've actually taken a number of these from uh, an internet analyst called Benedict Evans. If you want the full presentation, it is amazing, and I will uh, happily send it to you. So this shows, in, in a pretty striking way, why we're seeing this you know, mobile takeover. So the blue line, PCs uh, in decline for the first time, and mobile sort of smartphones and tablets from a standing start completely dominating. In, in, in global unit sales. And if you split that out into a little bit more granularity, you'll see um, this, this data, it ends at 2012, but if you go to, to, to today, you'll see that tablets are already outselling PCs, which are still declining. Smartphones, again, you know, miles, miles uh, ahead. So this means that the population without any internet is diminishing very quickly, the, and that's principally coming through the smartphone. So there are tons of people who've skipped the desktop, who for the very first time are connecting to the web using a smartphone. Now, put another way, if we look into the next five years, whilst you know, the population of adults isn't really changing that much, what is changing dramatically is how smartphone penetration is happening and tablet penetration. So this is not geeks with Google Glass or anything like that. This is the ubiquity of everyone using these devices for their everyday lives. Uh, if we dig a little bit deeper and say, what does this mobile traction look like? Um, you'll see most of it is coming from the app. You know, mobile web, this gray bar at the top, is not necessarily growing that much. Desktop web is kind of staying the same this year to last year. But the app is what's taking you know, a huge amount uh, of our attention. And this is pretty cool because you know, in global text messaging, seven and a half trillion messages sent every year. And then WhatsApp, one company with just 30 engineers, is basically sending the same volume of messages. So the app ecosystem means that with just a handful of people, you can you know, build something unbelievably uh, important and significant in this, um, in this day. So mobile is pretty cool because you get a pocket su supercomputer. It's incredibly powerful. These devices much more powerful than the laptops and desktops that you used just a few years ago. And you also have a whole bunch of additional benefits. You can take it wherever you go. It has all these sensors, cameras. So, so the combination of, of these things really mean that, uh, that this today is absolutely changing all of our lives and all of our businesses. Now, I'm aware this is a retail conference. So let's, let's look at the, uh, the, the commerce side. Um, unsurprisingly, we'll see that, 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 that commerce from your smartphone, from your tablet, is basically doubling um, every two years, and that's only going to increase. Now, what we found at Lyft is that different devices have different peak times. So Monday mornings, as our shopper comes to her desk, you know, maybe she's looking for a little bit of help uh, to get through the week, the desktop is, is a hugely important device. In the evening, she comes home, sits on her sofa, gets a glass of wine, she starts shopping on her tablet. And then in the weekends, she's using her handset. She might be out and about, brunch with friends, in store. And so we see that it's the same consumer using these three devices. And what's really important to notice is that these are not being used in isolation. These are being tightly braided together. So a typical journey might start on mobile, 
you know, in a cab somewhere. She might find something she likes and she goes back to her desk and sees it in a bit more detail. She then might actually go in store to see the quality of the leather of the item and then finally pull the trigger when she gets an alert to say, oh, this has just come back in stock or something. So, you know, it's very tempting to, to look, these, look at, you know, mobile commerce and social commerce and in-store commerce and e-commerce in, in isolation, look at conversion rates, look at uh, volumes through each channel, but in reality, they're so tightly braided together that it's very difficult to understand the importance of one platform. So if you removed mobile, for example, you'd probably see more sales dip than just the sales that are completed on the mobile device. Now, mobile is also pretty tough to, to build for because there are two use cases um, that sort of sit alongside each other. So the first is snacking. This is the idea that customers are looking to kind of go down the rabbit hole to be really engaged by what's going on, to get lost in the device because they've got time to kill. So typically, they'll cycle through this sort of hierarchy of apps. When they're bored, they might start with their inbox. They might then go to like Instagram. They might go to Pinterest or Facebook. They might go to list afterwards. And they're just looking to, to, to kind of pass the time and get engaged. And then the second <coughs> sort of conflicting action is I want something now. I want it really quick. I have zero patience. So you know, maybe someone's in store, they find something they really want to buy, it isn't in their size, they're going to pull out their app and try to buy it, and they want to get that product super quickly, check out super quickly. So while time on site in the snacking uh, um, mindset is something you're looking to extend, in the I want something ASAP, it's looking, uh, you're looking to diminish that. And because this is, again, retail conference, I thought I'd just share some conversion rates uh, across different verticals. Um, you'll see they change uh, quite significantly uh, between vertical, but the one constant is that tablet has a higher conversion rate than smartphone. Now, in part, this is because uh, the checkout is quite difficult, uh, sort of fiddly on a handset versus on a tablet. In part, it's also this snacking, immersive, active uh, action versus the um, tablet, which has a little bit more intent often. And so one of the things that List we sought to, 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 to do to solve this is build a universal checkout. So we started life as a lead generation model where you find something you want to buy, we'd redirect you to that website to check out. And what we launched last year in the US and actually here pretty s in the UK pretty soon is a universal checkout which lets you add 10 things from five different sites and press buy in a single step on your phone. And we've seen that improve checkout uh, conversion rates a, a lot as well. So distributed commerce. I think specifically with, within fashion and other taste-based verticals, we've seen content play a huge role. So a lot of these e-commerce sites, their homepage is very rich content. It adds context. It inspires the customer uh, to purchase. And we've seen, I mean, net a -Porte is probably the, the, uh, one of the best examples in fashion, that the, the, the fashion journalists actually moved to the business. The content was created on their homepage. And, uh, and content came to commerce. And what we're beginning to see now is the opposite journey. So commerce is being distributed around the web. So wherever the customer finds something that they want to buy in a social media site, in a, in a content site, they can pull the trigger then and there. We're seeing Twitter start t testing in-app commerce. So whenever anyone shares a link with you, you can buy it then and there. Facebook are, are doing the same. We've seen in the magazine world, Harper's Bazaar now have bizarre shops as well. And this is really sort of day one for, for this particular um, you know, commerce being distributed, I think we're going to see a lot of this. So again, wherever the consumer is and she sees something she wants to buy, she will be able to pull the trigger then and there. And this is again something we think about at List because we partner with many department stores and brands and boutiques to aggregate this, this overview of everything that's available to buy in fashion online. And with a simple API connection, we can actually power that native commerce on these uh, magazines or social sites. And then why is this relevant to mobile? Well, because most social media is being consumed on mobile, because most published content is now being consumed on mobile. And so if you put the two and two together, when you see this distribution of commerce to content, most of that will be happening on mobile. Now, as we see more and more sales um, come through the mobile device, another benefit we have is that we get to see exactly what's going on. So this is where it gets a little bit interactive. I'm going to ask you, you know, on a mobile device, what color item has the highest return rate? So what color item, when it's bought, is most likely to be returned? Red. Red. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> so, so we see that red dresses have twice the return rate of black dresses on mobile because red is quite a difficult color to pull off. Actually, you don't see very much red here. There are many different shades of red, whereas black is black. You get one shade of it, it looks great. So, so we get to track things like this. We get to see that... that um, 
consumers on a certain day of the week are most likely to return something they'll purchase, and that is a Monday. Because again, they're, they're staring down the barrel of a five-day work week. They think maybe Jimmy Choo can help them get through this week. <laughs> and then by the time it arrives, they think, well, it's almost the weekend, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm all right. So the data that you get from, from mobile commerce means that you can really start understanding your consumer better. You can understand your marketing better. So if you're thinking about performance marketing, you, know, you can go down to granularity of an item, of a location, of a time of day to really make these flows work better. This is all hypothetical data, but, but in theory, we can also um, you know, help department stores or brands make better decisions about what they carry. So let's imagine that there's a certain brand, in this case, Helmut Lang, sold by Bloomingdale's. We could tell Bloomingdale's that many people, 75% of people who buy this brand also buy this other brand that maybe they don't carry to help them understand what they should be, what they should be buying for, for their consumers in New York and in a different set for, for California. You know, or another example, if we see that uh, if you discount a certain brand by 20%, you'll see an uplift of sales. And if you discount it by 30%, you see exactly the same uplift. That tells you you probably don't need to, uplift to, to, you don't need to discount by 30% if 20% is going to give you the additional benefit. So all this stuff is very easily tracked on mobile device, which is um, you know, making, making it easier to, to run this effective uh, business. The last area is basically how the mobile device is binding the physical world and the digital world together. Really, it's acting, the, uh, acting as the glue. So some of you will have seen this. this I, think, I think it's in South Korea. This is a, a subway poster. And this chap, you just you know, you have QR codes. You take a photo of the code. And then in a few hours, these items will be delivered to your front door. Um, I think the way we think about the, the sort of mobile um, binding the offline and online world is slightly different. Uh, and I should, I should say as well that you know, we know our customer uh, is shopping at her desktop um, during, the, during the working week. In the evening, she's then using the iPad at home. And all that while, we can personalize the experience for her, which is our business. And yet, when she's in store, we can't do that until now with the mobile device. So let's imagine that she walks to a city for the first time. And because we know what she likes, we can plan a shopping trip for her. We can tell her to go to these different stores, which will carry the items you know, in her size, in stock, that she's going to be most likely to be interested in. And as soon as she walks into a store, and this is, by the way, totally opt-in, she can, you know, it's, it's only if she wants this, she will see all the items as soon as she walks in the store that are going to be interesting to her. And then the retailer, in their device, will also have a similar view to say, these are, this is Hannah, this is the customer, she's interested in these things, this is her size, this is what she's bought before. Uh, so really to personalize from both sides. And then even if she's looking at individual items, she can learn more about them. So she can see who else has added this item. You know, maybe it was featured in Vogue. Maybe it was shot and styled this way by this stylist and this model. And this context around the product in the real world is helping her understand uh, the product better and drive conversion rates. And then finally, using some of the Apple Pay uh, or NFC, you can just tap phones with the, with the merchant, and you've bought the item, and off you go. So this is our little vision of, uh, of the future. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it for me. I think I'd like to close on this quote. Um, this is uh, the Amazon founder who, when he lifted his business in 97, he, he ended with a quote saying, it's still day one for e-commerce. Uh, and almost 20 years later, you know, I still think it's day one. I still think we haven't scratched the surface of what we can do. And the only constant is that the rate of change is accelerating faster and faster with these new devices, these new mindsets. So there is uh, there's an awful lot of work to do. All right, thank you.